through three hours of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio, and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast, where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now, here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. After Show time with uh, Jim and Michelle. Hey, guys. Da, 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 da. Hello. <sighs> All right, we got people who are have been on hold for a while, so let's jump in there and take them, and then we'll catch up on what's been going on with you guys, okay? Fair okay. Enough. All right, let's go to the phones, pick up uh, Brad out of Utah. Hey, Brad, thanks for your patience. You're on the after show. Oh, no problem. I'm glad to be on. Um, so I decided to go treat myself to, which is usually not a treat, to go to a Black Friday event. Uh-huh. <laughs> But at a sporting goods store, it's really not bad. It's actually kind of a lot of fun. <laughs> and? And I locked eyes on a Ruger PC-9 carbine, so I Ooh. took it home. Was it was it like love at first sight? You know, you looked into each other's eyes, you know, and that was the thing? It, it actually was, so I really do believe in miracles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, why? I mean, the obvious question is, this is an... I, you know, I'm, I, I want to say it's odd. It's not. It's a cool little rifle, but it is different enough to where you're saying, okay, what is the use? So what what was it about the PC-9 that got your attention? Well, I wanted something a little larger than, you know, planking with a 22, but something that wasn't going to break the bank. And I figure 9 millimeter is pretty inexpensive. True. And the gun is really different. It kind of reminds me if the M1 carbine was designed today. Yeah. It's kind of what it really is. You know, it's interesting yeah. to say it is kind of because the M1 carbine was actually a little thirty caliber pistol round, really. Right. Hmm. So this being yeah. a 9 millimeter really made it very intriguing. So I, I took it out and uh, and I uh, fired it out at the range. And I tell you, I, I have a certain expectation I usually set in my mind mm-hmm. of what I'm hoping that the firearm will be. Okay. This far far exceeded it. How so? Uh, the quality of it, the fit and finish, the accuracy is really amazing on this. And I, I ran all the ammo that I could find just to see what it was going to do. Mm-hmm. Flawless. Well, it sounds Absolutely. like you, you didn't have an expectation of a lot of accuracy. No. I figure, you know, out of uh, nine millimeter, I figure it was probably maybe going to lack. I figure, you know, eh, 100, 150 yards, I might be able to hit a, a foot round target, but oh nope! I was at uh, 275, I was hitting that foot round target, and I was putting. Wait, 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 wait! At 275 yards. 275. This thing is super amazingly accurate. It's unbelievable. What kind of sight did you put on this thing? It's just running the iron sights, and it's the sights that uh, are a lot like an M1 carbine. It- and how much are you having to hold? I mean, that's a lot of drop for a 9 millimeter at that distance, I would think. Right. And I did compensate knowing what the drop was, but I was right. able to get a lot of rounds on target. That's impressive. I was really impressed with it. I mean, I thought, this this can't be for real. This Somebody's got to be spoofing me, and someone's <laughs> in the bushes shooting at my target because I'm missing. <laughs> now, there's a little guy out there, when you shoot, he runs out and whacks that steel target with a, a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> do you reload your ammunition, or is this factory ammo? No, I do not reload. I I, uh, I fire all factory ammo. Okay. Awesome. Huh. So I thought the, you bought the gun just because you had a dozen Glock mags laying around and said, what can I buy that these will fit into? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> right. The, the guy at the counter wasn't sure if, if the Ruger magazines were specific to the PC-9, and when we got to look a little further into it, it stamped uh, SR9. Right. Oh, yeah. It's the standard SR9 mag, and also it comes with an adapter you can put in there, and you can use Glock magazines in that rifle. Yeah. In fact, uh, I have not played with that yet, but I did pick up a couple of the, uh, what is it, uh, Magpul uh, magazines that they have the yeah, and of course, you can also get, if you look around, you can find a 32 or 33 round Glock mag that you, that'll work in there. Mm-hmm. Now you've got a, a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And in fact, if I don't quote me on this, but I know it's made by Magpul. It's a drum. I want to say it's 50 or 60 round drum. They make 100, uh, too. Oh, they make 100 that, or two, I believe. You know, now you're having a fun day at the range. Now, let me throw this thought out to you. You may have already thought about this, but 
I will tell you, I think that the Ruger PC-9 carbine is actually a really good home defense gun. It's funny that you say that because I was running the, uh, the M1 carbine, mm-hmm. and now I'm running the Ruger PC-9 in its place. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the ammo is better. You, you know, you got more ammo in a magazine. It's more modern, probably more reliable. Uh, and you got all this great defensive ammo now in 9 millimeter. I just think it'd be a great home, home gun. Really do. Right. Oh, you know what? I actually lied to you. I got my notes here. It was, uh, it was 225 yards that I was shooting at that foot oh, round practi- target. Practically point blank then. Gee whiz. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I got that space down my hallway in my house. Not. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm thinking a great stocking stuffer for you would be one of those universal mag loaders to save the thumb with all that ammunition you're going to be loading. Yeah. <laughs> Boy. I've actually hinted to the wife about stocking stuffers. And I've already got her. Uh, she was the one that uh, got her concealed weapons permit, and I bought her the thirty eight. Has she shot the carbine? No, she has not shot it yet. But I know, knowing her as well as I do, she's going to really like it. Mm-hmm. You bet. Because, again, you know, almost no recoil. It's just that's what a great little rifle. I mean, they I, that's a home run they got with that thing, isn't it, Michelle? Yes, absolutely. And, and people were eagerly awaiting that coming back to the market. Yeah, and the yeah. fact that they were smart enough to allow you to use Glock magazines mm-hmm. in it. That was, that was very un like in the old days and just brilliant. Right. So we, we have in our store like one of the old original SR9s. I'm thinking that uh, we could give you a combo deal there. <laughs> <laughs> Always thinking. <laughs> well, I will tell you, I am a big fan of the SR9. Yes, I think it's an awesome pistol. <laughs> so, I don't know why that thing got bypassed and people don't pay attention to it, but I love it. It's got a great trigger. It mm-hmm. is slim. I mean, I just think it's a great shooting pistol. Yeah, really the SR9C, do. that's one of our favorites. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And for those who, are, those who don't know it, if you can find one used out there, scarf it up, because that is a nice pistol, yes, really. It is. Speaking well, of the Ruger pistol, the, one uh-huh. of the magazines that works in the PC-9 is also the, the Ruger Security 9 magazine. Really? Yep, I didn't it know also that. also works in that. I picked one up, and I thought, you know, I'm going to experiment and see if this is going to work, because it looked the same side by side. It just looked shorter. Hmm. So... I uh, loaded it up, put it in there, and, it, yep, it was flawless. It worked great. Well, I'll be darned. I did not know that. Just learned something. That's cool. Well, Brad, thank you. That is a great range report, and congrats. Uh, and let me tell you, hitting targets past 200 yards with a 9 millimeter carbine is impressive. It's mm-hmm. not just the rifle. It's also the shooter. Well, my wife says, uh, you sure spend a lot of time out of that range. I said, yeah, well, it pays off. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. It, it pays off in making you a better shooter. It also pays off in keeping you out of the house. So there's that. So everybody wins on that one. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. <laughs> you take care. Uh, hey, let's talk with Daryl. He's, uh, I guess, driving through Ohio. I don't know if you're out of cell phone range now. Daryl, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, good, good. So I hear you went hunting. Yeah. Went talk hunting to me. Out in Pennsylvania with my father-in-law and his uncle and my uh, wife's aunt, uncle. So, how'd it go? Went very well for me. I ended up with a huge eight-point buck, probably 200 pounds. Oh, man. Yeah. Holy cow. Son of a gun. So, what'd you shoot it with? Um, I bought a thirty out 6 uh, Remington 700 Classic for my brother-in-law several years ago to hunt out there, and that's what I got it with. First buck I've got with it. That, is that like an older, like maybe a 15, 20-year-old rifle? Yeah. That is that fabulous stock design. The, the 700 Classic has this great classic stock design that I think is one of the prettiest stocks Remington's ever put on a, a rifle. You scored huge with that one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Man. It also just feels really good. Well, yeah, that stock, just- if I remember right, it's not. it looks very much like, Michelle, the original Ruger 77 stock that Lynn Brownell was involved in the design of that, the famous stock maker. Uh, it's that classic style stock and not the glossy Monte Carlo. It's a, an oil finished stock. 
I've, I've always lusted over those. I thought that uh, Remington really got it right with those. And that's, yeah, that goes back probably, I say 15, 20, I bet it's 25 years old. I wouldn't, wouldn't be at all surprised. So if he ever wanted to get rid of that rifle. <laughs> <laughs> My brother-in-law's got first dibs on it. No. Oh, he wants well, it know, back. Daryl, you, you, you are driving through Ohio right now. I know of a store you could stop in if you're going anywhere near Toledo. It uh, just so happens. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and oh, by the way, do you want a Ruger SR9? I happen to know where there is one. <laughs> oh goodness! Are, are you going by Toledo by any chance? No, I'm driving through Salina, Ohio, right now. Oh, okay. Too far south. Yeah. All righty. <laughs> well, congrats on the buck. That is terrific. Uh, what ammo are you using, by the way? Um, I had been using Herders um, up until this year, and I was running low and didn't have time to run down and get it from Cabela's, so I uh, got some Hornaday 150 grain from Rural King, and that worked really good. Yes, it will. It's that, you know, it's that old deal. If you shoot them in the right place, they will generally die right there. <laughs> <laughs> it hopped about two times and fell over. Yeah, it's pretty hard to beat a 30 out 6 mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's a reason it's been so popular for more than 100 years. That is great. Well, congratulations. That is excellent. We, I appreciate the uh, range report on that one. That's terrific. Thanks, Daryl. Drive safely, man. All righty. Well, there you go. I mean, think about it. How classic does that get? A Remington 700 bolt action classic stock in 30 out 6 mm -hmm. for a Pennsylvania hunt, which is... For those who haven't been to Pennsylvania, don't know. You guys know the drill. That is like deer hunter heaven. Yeah. Yes. And oh yeah. Yes. The woods turn to blaze orange. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but I heard a story that way back, this is before cell phones, that the uh, phone companies would actually go put cell phones out at various places on the roads because there were so many hunters out uh, on deer in deer season. But evidently, it's just like they, they close the public schools and people just get off work and everybody goes hunting. Hmm. Why did they put cell phones out? You lost me. N not cell phones. Uh, did I say cell phones? I meant the pay phone. So they put pay phones out there for people to be able to use because they had so many people out. And before cell phones were out, they put pay phones out and installed <laughs> them out there. Hmm. <laughs> so, wow. I, don't, I don't know if that's true, but I like the image of it anyway. Sure. What's, a, pay, what's we'll a pay phone? We'll spread it. We'll <laughs> spread it as gospel. So, Well, a, a pay phone is where well, they have a shelf and they leave a cell phone there and you put a dollar on there and use a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's that box that Superman changed in. <laughs> that's right. No kidding. Yeah, among all those things, you show pictures of them to uh, younger people say, do you know what this is? What's that? Yeah. No. <laughs> Back when phones had buttons that you pushed, or maybe even Dial. dials. Yeah. Right. Dials. The collect, yeah. That collect call that you wanted to make. Or, or when, I've done uh, a practice. Come pick me up. When, when you, yeah. <laughs> when you get, get the call at the house, right, and you would yell out the window, it says, Michelle, long distance. <laughs> right? If it was a long distance <laughs> call, you had to come running because somebody's meter was running pretty That's fast right. at You've that point. That's right. You've got 20 minutes. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, God. Okay, we're going to take a deep breath while we geese here. And a bunch of geezers talking about the old days. Right, and then, talk about uh, plastics. <laughs> yeah, we'll come back and talk about modern day and Christmas presents for gunnies. Oh. This is Ryan Gresham with Gun Talk. Visit guntalk.com slash win to enter the fall day giveaway for a chance to win the grand prize or one of three first prizes. The grand prize winner receives a Ruger Security 9 compact handgun and a Ruger American Hunter rifle in 308, a Liberty Safe Special Edition Colonial 23 with the 3-in-1 flex interior, an ATN Thor LT 3-6 power thermal rifle scope, Three cases of ammunition from Federal Premium. A prize pack of popular holsters from Alien Gear Holsters, including the Shapeshift Core Carry Pack. And the Mantis X10 Shooting Performance System. Three first prize winners will receive the Alien Gear Holsters prize pack and the Mantis 10X Shooting Performance System. Enter now through December 13th at guntalk.com slash win. That's guntalk.com slash win. Mental Health and Guns. 
At Walk the Talk America, we're working with both the mental health community and the gun industry. Created by a gun industry veteran, Walk the Talk America seeks to raise awareness and create change through suicide prevention and firearm safety without legislation. We strive to eliminate the prejudice that firearms and mental health face. For more information and to support Walk the Talk America, please visit walkthetalkamerica.org. What'd you say, Michelle? I said, oh, what'd you give me? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, A gift certificate to your store. Oh, all right, I can find something there. (laughs) Do you need directions, Michelle? I can write them down for you. No, no, no. I can find my own thing, too. (laughs) You probably have it stashed back where nobody can get it at this point. Yeah. Just perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Interesting that we get a call from a guy who says he's carrying a... 38 revolver for his everyday carry. You don't expect to hear that that much these days, do you? No, I bet it happens more than we realize. I think so. I had a question for you, Tom. Yes? Since you like the 1911 trigger, mm-hmm. the slide mm-hmm. versus a pivot, mm-hmm. uh, wouldn't you be like have the best of both worlds if somebody designed a striker fire with a slide-style trigger? That would be good. You'd be in heaven. Maybe. Maybe yes, maybe but, no. But, but I'm not... It's not such a big deal that I I don't think about it a lot. The triggers on our plastic or metal guns, and I'm thinking like P365 is kind mm-hmm. of like hybrid. Um, it's pretty good, right? And I mean, I have honestly, I have no problem shooting at 25 yards with it. At 50 yards, it's more a factor of the size of the gun and the sight radius. Okay. It becomes the difficulty as opposed to a bad trigger. Right. Uh, but I will say this. You really, and nobody pays attention to this, your finger placement on the trigger is really important on these modern guns. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean, and we're talking about a 16th or an eighth of an inch difference in how far you inserted your trigger finger in and mm-hmm. actually contacting the trigger and where you're pulling it because you could pull it left or right or not get a consistent pull with it. Mm-hmm. And you kind of have to experiment with that and figure out what works with that particular gun with your grip. Right. It, it's crazy to think that that makes such a difference, but it, it does for sure. But it do. It, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it absolutely does. do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter at three, five, seven yards. But when you start backing out 15, 20, 25 yards, you can really see the difference. I mean, and people say, well, you know, yeah, the gun shoots a little bit to the left. Well, no, the gun shoots right where you point it. <laughs> it's the funniest thing, isn't it? Weird. They do make targets, like practice targets, that give you all that information. I know Birchwood Casey makes one to shoot right. and see. And it's like a pie chart, and it's broken all down where, you know, Yes. Percentages. Whatever the breakdown is, like you're jerking yeah. or the finger on the trigger. If you're shooting low and left, you're yes. triggered. And if you're yes. shooting high, you're healing it. You're, yes. you're pressing in with your hand. Mm-hmm. And that. And those, I mean, yes, it's a general look. It's kind of a guess as to what probably is happening. But it's better than nothing. Right. It's right. kind of eye-opening. Statistically, yeah, you know that odds are this is what right. happened. Right. Well, and mm-hmm. I think the other big difference in, in I think, any more people coming in and looking at firearms, what makes a huge difference between the 1911s, especially in these 365s and, and the Hellcats and some of these new guns coming out, are the sights. Because they have such large sights, but they're not in the way of carrying or holstering. Mm-hmm. So they're very easy to be seen. You know, they have night sight ability. There's all these things that go into it that, you know, as we age and we need a quick sight picture, you got it. Well, the other thing is, you know what, even if you have young eyes, if you have sights that help you pick them up more quickly, then that's a good thing. So if if the idea is speed, a set of sights that you can see quickly and easily, and I, man, I got to tell you, I am a huge fan of the fiber optic front sight. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, people say, well, I got night sights. Go, okay, night sights are good, but honestly... If I had to choose, I would go with a fiber optic front sight over the night sights. But, Tom, you can't see that in the middle of the dark and the night. Well, you know how I simulate uh, those things. I just shoot with my eyes closed. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, plus, don't you only get mugged in the daytime, Tom? Don't you have a little 
placard that you're wearing or little pin. <laughs> yeah, so it's so daytime yeah. muggable yeah. only. Yeah. That's right. Not not available for nighttime mugging. Thank right. you very much. <laughs> Sleeping, leave me alone. <laughs> Do not <Right>. disturb. <laughs> yeah, since I go to bed at six, you know, it's okay. <laughs> well, of course, the other part of it is uh, when you are using a flashlight, mm -hmm. if, if you are using one of those, one of the tricks you, you figure out if you do a fair amount of shooting at night on ranges is, yes, you could do the, the grip where you've got the flashlight on the gun kind of a deal. But if you bring, shoot, frankly, if you shoot one-handed, hold that with your right hand with a pistol, and you put the flashlight in your left hand and put it up like next to the side of your the head, yep. now you are illuminating your sights as well as the threat, mm -hmm. and you don't have any problems. And people say, yeah, well, but yeah, I know, but there's there's always that. They say, well, you're shooting one-handed. Yes, that's correct. That's why I go to bed with my third eye on, you know, the little <laughs> headlamp. <laughs> No it, keeps me, it keeps me so, from rolling over and laying on my belly. <laughs> so you, you, look, you look like one of those minions. <laughs> Sorry, lady, we don't serve minors here. <laughs> oh, boy. That's a visual. Yes. I saw that, the, is, that is a vision for sure. I saw Holy the coolest cow. take on, on the old, old drill this week, Tom, at the range. Okay. Um, you know, you're familiar with the disorientation drill where you walk around, circle, you know, figure eights around barrels right, or whatever, just right, so you really right. don't know where your targets are. And then you turn and you're supposed to fire. This instructor had targets marked. When I first looked at it, I'm like, this is kind of weird because it had seven, blue, uh, E, just different right. things marked on, on different targets. And all they, they would call them out. Well, no, they didn't call them out. Okay. He, would, he would say, um, shoot, or, you know, spin or shoot or whatever it was, um, where you have to then address the target. He'd say, six letter of the alphabet. So you had to think when A B C F. So you you couldn't just draw and shoot. And if you drew before you shoot, he took he took marks off for that. What? You what? had to stop and think. Wow. It wasn't just like blue and you look for blue and shoot. Right. He would say, you know, smiley face so in you're, blue. You're problem solving in the middle of it. Right. Right. Yeah, okay, I like that. But I want to go back to what's the disorientation drill you're talking about. What is yeah, that? Yeah, this is what well, the way this guy does it, he's got two uh two barrels out there which I used right. for cover. He goes, that's not part of the drill. Um, <laughs> but it's it's two two barrels. It's, you know, up, up range. And he just has you walk around them backwards and forwards. So your back's to the target almost all the time. And you can't, in other words, you can't be studying the targets trying to memorize them when you're not shooting. And then he'll call and say, you know, shoot. Uh, okay. Six letter of the alphabet. So now not, you're not a case. He's not trying to make you dizzy or anything. No, no, no. Here, drink okay. this. Well, that's what I would yeah. thought. Yeah, like you're going around figure saying, eight until you're dizzy. No, you're like then... you got your, your head on the baseball bat and spinning around going, this is not good. I'm not liking this at all. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was hammered. It was great. No, it, it's more of a um, you, you just inserted yourself into or you, you find yourself in a situation. You don't just draw and start shooting. There, you have some yeah, you reasoning look, you look to do. Up and, you, and you have to basically figure out what's going on in front of you. Proper and identification of your target. You're, you're, yes. Yeah, and it is. It's problem solving in the middle of the deal. You have to look. You know, it's the OODA loop. You know, uh, orient. You know, you've got to before you can take action. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I kind of like what he's doing there. Uh, I've seen people do have targets the same deal where they call out. You know, blue or seven or whatever, and so. You have to look hard mm -hmm. and actually understand what you are looking at before you shoot. Right. And I think that's a good thought process of not just, you know, okay, you see the target there, I'm going to call and you shoot it. Well, I've already figured out what the target is. I know what I'm going to shoot. But in the real right. world, you have to understand what's going on and look hard, hard focus on things to understand what's going on. Right. And, and use your mind, not just, you know, there's somebody with a gun in the mall. Well, it could be a security guard. It could be a cop. Right. You know, well, you take that split second to assess sure. the situation, understand. And, and again, without, with, without just having the, you know, smiley face, oh, there's one, boom. You've got to have that one extra yeah. level of, of thinking. And like I said, he was, he was docking people for drawing prior. You had, you had to know what the target was before you even unholstered. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. He doesn't. Yeah. You know, he didn't want you not, just reacting not sure. to something, pulling the gun out, and start shooting. Okay. Uh, in shoot houses, we often do that, where you turn a corner and there's a, you know, the picture of somebody, mm -hmm. and you know, it may be somebody pointing a gun at you, the picture, or it may be a cop holding his hand out with a badge in it. Mm -hmm. You know, or it may be somebody holding a kid, but with a gun to the kid. 
So you kind of have to figure it out. And if that's the case, now you got to take the headshot mm-hmm. on the hostage situation. Yeah, same kind of thing. Yeah, it's basically you have to figure out, is this a threat? And if it is, what do I do about it? So same kind of deal, just making you think before you shoot and find it, figure out what it is and how am I going to react? Right. To it. And, I, and I've seen different threat assessment stuff. I just have this, this guy's particular method is like, well, that's kind of cool. You got to think for a second. And, you know, yeah. if you make a mistake here, it's better to make a mistake on the range than, you know, well, real, and, real world. And, yeah. And all this stuff, of course, just makes you start thinking, OK, Michelle, let me f- flip over. Are people like it's we're short timers now on uh, Christmas buying. It's like you better get in there and get her done. Yes, you better. (laughs) (laughs) Items are slipping fast, right? I was just going to ask, do you still have stuff? What's going? What are people buying? Oh, a little bit of everything. Um, I'd have to say all of a sudden the um, rifles have taken a, a, I don't know. It is rifle season for a lot of us right now, but um, some more interest again, I guess, in the two twenty threes. Really, in ARs? Yep. Yep. Ah, so okay. I would have thought that couple, diminished by now. A, a couple bit. of class. Well, it did for the longest time, and then here just recently, I'd say just mm-hmm. in the last week or so, there's hmm. been interest in them, but not in the cheap ones, in the good oh, ones. Oh, that's like, interesting. Like the high high line ones, you hmm, know. So you're right. paying. Eight nine hundred dollars for for some of these guns that have okay. you know different options on them, but um, some of the classics you know there's still the Henrys are a huge Christmas item. Um, well, those start boy, getting are picked you, over. Are you seeing they're they're running TV commercials on like Fox? What well, I, I mean, yeah. not outdoor shows, not hunting shows. I mean. And because they're lever actions, I guess they let them get away with that. But I, I, mean, I think it's great. Mm-hmm. Right? It's an entrance must, way. You know, my guess is they're selling a lot of rifles. We had somebody call earlier that didn't get to air but wanted to pass along a thought because you were talking about setting up women with firearms and different options to use and using rifles for home defense. And he actually set his wife up with a Henry lever action in mm-hmm. a 38 357 because no. it didn't have much recoil. It's mm-hmm. still a very good short distance round. And, yep. and he's like, she can work the action. She, he doesn't have to worry about any of these semi-autos. Mm. She can. And you could even the use movements. the action with one hand if you had to. Yeah, you could. You could, but also even a pump, some pumps are set up if you are short, it's a long reach out mm-hmm. there to to run that pump. Yep. And everybody can run a lever action. Uh, you know, I like it. I think a uh, 38 in a 16-inch barrel lever action would be a great idea. Mm-hmm. So hmm. I, that was an opportunity, I guess, to put that in there. So. Plus, plus <laughs> Chuck, Chuck Connors would look down upon you with... With good, this is true. Yeah, right. That's true. Well, but if you had a, you know, another thirty-eight in the home, I mean, again, it's keeping all that same caliber and mm-hmm. and making it simple. I mean, it it made sense. And they're smaller guns. It's not like it's a huge right. heavy gun. So. They're small. They're thin. They're easy to carry. Right. And and I will tell you, take one of those and drop a little red dot on it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now you know. Now you have. A no kidding, honest, anything from two feet to a hundred yards rifle if you needed it. Right. Can you? And yeah, because you know, you're going to pick up for going from, say, imagine going from a four inch barrel revolver to a 16 inch barrel rifle, you're going to pick up three or four hundred feet per second more in velocity out of that. Significant. So it is going to hit, it'd be almost like going to a 357 Magnum in your pistol with the velocity increase you're going to get out of a 38. Out of the rifle. Yeah, out of the rifle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. interesting. I like it. Now, how mm-hmm. how much loss is there if you if you could in a perfect world compare calibers? Mm-hmm. A bolt action or lever action, which virtually has no operating system per se, no gas right. system or piston. Right. How much if you got if we could match everything the same versus a semi-auto with a spring and buffer tube, etc. Mm-hmm. How much how much energy do you give up in that energy that's absorbed? None. Zero. Zero. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's all done. But by the time the action starts working, the bullet is already on its way. So there's, there's, you're not absorbing any of the energy uh, with the action of a semi-auto where you're going to have a slower bullet. So okay. no, there shouldn't, shouldn't so, be any difference. So all things equal, a, a, a bolt action or a um, lever action doesn't hit harder than a... No. No. Okay. 
Shouldn't be any difference at all. I thought that energy sucking up would, you know, minuscule amount, but it would do something, but maybe not. I, I don't think you could measure it, uh, you know, just, I don't think you could find it in the system. Okay. So, yeah, not not an issue. Not Certainly nothing to worry about. Well, no, I, I knew it would be negligible. I'm just curious right. if, if there was a difference at all. I mean, and it all gets overcome by depending on how hard you pull the trigger. Well, sure. <laughs> Which always makes the bullet go faster. Right. I also try to flick the barrel toward the... Well, I would hope so. Try. That's right. Whether you just press the trigger or press right. the trigger. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe, I'm just thinking about what would be cool Christmas presents. For yourself, gun cleaning stuff is always good. Boar snakes, uh, you know, all of that. Um, in fact, we were talking earlier this week, Michelle, one of the things that serious shooters are doing now is they have bore scopes so they can actually look at the inside of their barrels, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And people say, why would I want to do that? Well, one, I want to find out, did it really get clean? Also, what's the condition of the barrel? If you're a serious competitive shooter, mm -hmm. and we got a lot of people shooting out well beyond 1,000 yards on the long range, mm -hmm. you want to have a good barrel. You do. And, you know, this is one of those classics where <laughs> you have one of those guns, you're going to invest in quality cleaning equipment. And this is mm. huge because... People want to buy the the inexpensive nine or twenty dollar kits for rifles or yep. shotguns. Right. You no. have to assemble them, and, and there's nothing that is smooth about the assembly of those different pieces mm -hmm. to make yep. up that cleaning you, rod. You need a one piece cleaning you rod. Really do. If you're serious, and you need a bore guide where you take the bolt out. Yep. You know, uh, and, and you clean from the the breech end, and you need just need good product. And I'm going to say even one step further, the swivel handle cleaning rods are mm -hmm. even better. Oh yes, ball bearings mm -hmm. in the handle is yep. a great way to go. That way, the rod turns when With it the engages the rifling. Yep. yep, and no, it's. And people say, well, yeah, but those things cost 40 or 50 bucks. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you <laughs> you, you $1,000 rifle. Say, exactly. And, You've got to. Oh, yeah. And it's only going to last you 100 years. Right, right. But, you know, if you do a lot of shooting, there's a lot of buildup that happens with these guns. Oh, yeah. You know, the, depending on the type of rounds that you use. But, you know, the well, lead, the copper. Oh. Let me explain what we're talking about here. With these segmented rods, the, the, the ones where you got like a three or four or five piece rod, you screw them together. Okay, and then you run it in the barrel, and then the patch hits the rifling, and it's you got to really push on it. The rod bends inside the barrel, mm -hmm. and that segment where you screw two sections together now has a little bit of a ridge yep. there, and it's now rubbing up against the inside of your rifle barrel and scratching it. Yeah, so it's actually putting a nick mm -hmm. in the rifling which yep. is obviously affecting the accuracy long-term. It's not a scratch. It's just an extra groove, you guys. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's a, a straight groove where everything else is spiraling. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're no basically symmetry. just, it, it's a shortcut. That's what it is. It went in 8.001. <laughs> Twist on your barrel. <laughs> oh, yeah, Kenzie clean it, I see. Mm. No, really, you know, it's interesting you say all that, uh, Michelle, because, yeah, a one-piece cleaning rod, mm -hmm. and then people will say, well, should I get the nylon coated or not? I tend to the not nylon coated, although I don't think there's a real decision made on that. My fear with the stuff that's nylon coated on the bear, on the rod is that if you had any kind of abrasive in there, it could get embedded mm -hmm. into that. Whereas a steel rod, you can wipe it down with a patch and clean it off, and it should never get anything embedded in it. Well, and for women out there, this is a nonstick pan. <laughs> with the surface starting to flake off, right? Mm, <laughs> Everybody, right. throw that pan away. It is not yeah. safe to cook don't it. Do, right. Don't do that. <laughs> but no, it makes a difference. I mean, when you you have expensive firearms, buy good equipment to maintain it, you know? So, you know, the, the cleaning equipment is huge. You know, the electronic ear protection. If you're going to do a lot oh, of shooting and you take people out with you, you know, to buy an extra pair, one for you, one for them, Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many things. That, that is a great Christmas present, by the way. Electronic earmuffs are such a wonderful thing at the range. Mm -hmm. I think hearing protection is way overrated. <laughs> what? I've been shooting for years. I never use it. <laughs>
That's why we don't listen to him. Folks, <laughs> it doesn't come back, folks. Take no, it's a, one, it's a one-way deal, isn't it? Yep. Yes, it, it is. It absolutely yeah, is, yeah. Whether, it's, uh, whether it's rock music. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Damn drummers. Yeah, They're all drummers. The same. But, you know, you say frequently on the show, you know, put a little reflex or a little red dot sight on these guns. You know, you can get these fairly cheap for the person that's just starting out with something Mm -hmm. you know you can get something in decent quality of a reflex site for a hundred to 150 dollars and it's a lot of fun and as long as anything has that picatinny rail you can put it on any one of those guns handgun rifle shotgun Mm -hmm. whatever it is i talk about some great fun and if you want to set up a gun for introducing people for shooting Mm-hmm. Get you a 22 semi-auto rifle mm-hmm. with a pick rail on it and put a red dot on it. You know, a Ruger 1022, that Smith & Wesson, which is the little AR-looking thing. Ruger's got one. Mm-hmm. Any of those is just huge fun, and people love it so much. It set and them up for success, yeah. You don't have to explain anything. I mean, they look, they go, red dot. Okay, I know what to do with that. Yeah, just just get out of the way. Let them have fun. Well, and the thing with stepping away, and this is part of its popularity with the AR platform, is the fact that you have the six position adjustable stock. Yes, it fits everybody. Yeah, I mean you, <laughs> you can have a, you can have an eight year old shoot it yes. as well as an adult yes. shooting it with this little short collapsible stock or full length stock, and there's no recoil. And if you are of a mind, basically, if you want to get ready for Next Christmas, go ahead and put in all your stuff to buy a suppressor now. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, no, I think a 22 rimfire is a great way to go. Uh, I did mention, I think I did, and my buddy Dan Zelink, he's been on the show uh, a number of times. Mm-hmm. He had his grandson out at the range the other day, and he, I think his son, grandson is like five. Mm. And he had a CZ bolt action. They've got a little bitty youth model that is just cute as a bug and really seriously small. I mean, it's a nice little small bolt action. And he had a can on it, hmm. a little uh, screw-on suppressor, and that's what his son uses for squirrel hunting. <laughs> now, that is a slick rig. And if you have one of those ready for introducing youngsters to shoot, you talk about no noise. Yeah, and CZs are awesome. <laughs> they are, aren't they? <laughs> they, are. they really are. They are. Oh. And that little youth model of theirs is... And people say, well, that's going to cost, yes, it's going to be 300 bucks or whatever it is. Right. And it's also going to last 100 years. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and every time you take, here's the thing. When you buy quality, what do they say? Uh, it only hurts once. Right. You know, and then you're just happy. And if you buy cheap, it hurts all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Replacement after replacement after yeah. replacement. <laughs> or, or, frankly, sometimes just every time you pick it up, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just not that's good. But Billy, I only loved you to two hundred and seventy-five dollar budget. Uh, it wasn't <laughs> worth the extra twenty-five. For yeah. You. Anyway. So anyway, because there's a lot of cool stuff out there. And oh yes, uh, starting I think January one, we there are some. Stuff we'll be able to talk about, but we're going to have a flood of new guns because the gun companies are ready to unleash them on us as we head toward the SHOT Show, which is in January. So it is going to be tons of fun. Not that you should be waiting. I would think just go ahead and buy because there there are still some deals out there, are there not? Oh, yes. Lots of rebates going on, you know, free holster giveaways with some of these companies. Absolutely. Lots of things going on. So check it out. Get the, get your Gun Dealio app, mm-hmm. smartphone app. Yep. Or, you know what? Go to the gun store and ask. Right. <laughs> you know, that's, what, that's what they do. I was thinking as an idea, I mean, we know what to buy gun people. We buy them training. We buy them a holster. We buy them ammo, gift certificate of the range, something. It might be a good time to get non-gun people into... Like, hey, I bought your Christmas present. What'd you get me? I got you range time. Or mm-hmm. here's, you know, two hours with an instructor or something. People that aren't gun folks, that mm-hmm. it might be a way to, you know, ambassador them. Sure. And kind of kind of bring them into the, the fold. Well, you know, and here's how about a free way to do that? Where you say, present them with your homemade certificate, good for a range session with you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey. You know, I'll take you to the range, and we can shoot any of my guns you want, and I'll provide the ammo. Kind of a deal. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Just, just something to, to bring in the folks that aren't in the fold. Right. Yet. Yeah. So, I don't know, just an idea. Yep. In the meantime, buy something for yourself. 
Uh, and like I say, I like your idea, Michelle, of go buy yourself a real quality cleaning rod right. and good stuff because you will you will actually thank yourself over and over again and you can man, this is really nice. Right, because along with modernizing the rifles, they've really modernized the cleaning equipment and and chemicals. Yes, they have. As much as I love the smell of Hoppy's number nine, there's nothing wrong with it. There's actually newer and probably better stuff. Nice cologne, Gresham. (laughs) Yeah, I do like that, though, you know. But don't wait wait to buy a gun if you say, well, there's new stuff coming out. Because if you do that, you'll never buy a gun. There's always new stuff coming. There's always cool stuff, and that's why you want to be in early. Right. That's it. All right. So in the meantime, I got to go buy stuff. I did just buy two pistols because I needed a pistol. Yeah, you were so, a little low there, weren't you? I was. I was running very low, so I needed that. So, Dangerously low. So I uh, I have two new pistols. I'm getting one rigged up with the uh, red dot, and then I know that there are some new things coming out. I'll be getting some of those. I'm telling you, you're going to see a lot of pistols offered with red dots where you're going to buy them in the store with red dot already mounted, ready to go. Makes sense. <sighs> yep. Oh, yeah. And she's sighing over here. They're going, <laughs> that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Ah, oh, wait and see. <laughs> uh, you guys have a good week. We will check in uh, next Sunday. Okie dokie. Bye, Tom. Well, that wraps up another Gun Talk After Show. But if you want even more gun-related stuff, don't forget to check out Gun Dealio. It's the app for Apple and Android phones that connects you to all the Gun Talk shows, plus even more. We'll catch you next time for the Gun Talk After Show.